Pokemon Go is the latest phenomenon to hit mobile gaming, allowing people to travel the world and find their very own Pokemon to catch and raise, and even to become gym leaders. Hi everyone, Damien Fates here, and today I'm going to teach you how to get started in Pokemon Go. When you first launch the game, you'll be introduced to Professor Willow, who gives a little introduction to the world of Pokemon, and then directs you to design your avatar. There aren't too many options for designing your avatar, but once you've got a look that you like, go ahead and hit the check button to start your adventure. Now you'll see your Pokemon Trainer avatar standing on a map that should look familiar to you as it's based on your actual location. And you'll see on your screen that you're actually surrounded by three starter Pokemon. Normally you can try and catch all Pokemon around you, but for the start of the game you can only catch one, so make sure you click on the one that you want the most. For those unfamiliar with the starter Pokemon, these three are Charmander, which is a fire-based Pokemon, Bulbasaur, which is a grass-based Pokemon, and Squirtle, which is a water-based Pokemon. I want to catch Squirtle, so I clicked on him. When catching a Pokemon for the very first time, you're going to be asked whether or not to turn on Augmented Reality, referred to here as AR. Now if you don't know what that means, basically it will superimpose the Pokemon that you're trying to catch into your surroundings by using the camera and motion tracking software. However, since this feature does seem to eat up battery life, I turn it off. However, you can change this setting later, so don't worry about it. And now we're on the capture screen. This is where you catch your Pokemon. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the buttons that are visible. In the top left, we have a run button, which you can use to run away from the battle which is useful if you're low on Pokeballs and decide that you don't want to catch the Pokemon you're currently looking at. In the top right, we have the AR slider, which we now know stands for Augmented Reality. It's off right now, so we have a generated background for the Pokemon to sit in. And at the very bottom of the screen, we have the Pokeball. Now, before you throw the Pokeball, let's take a look at the circles that are currently on Squirtle's face. The white circle indicates where the ball must land in order to capture the Squirtle and the green circle which is changing size indicates how easy it will be to capture the Squirtle when you do land a hit. Basically, the smaller the green circle, the higher your chances of actually capturing the Pokemon. So it's best to try and time your throw appropriately. If you do manage to hit the center of the green circle when it's small, you'll even get an experience boost. Once you're ready to try your look, go ahead and put your finger on the Pokeball and flick it upwards, letting go towards the Pokemon that you want to catch. Once you hit the Pokemon with the Pokeball, it will try and escape, but if you're lucky, it will stay inside the Pokeball and you will have caught yourself a new friend. Pokemon! Now that you've caught your first Pokemon, it's time to go out there and find some more. That's right, to get the most out of this game, you actually need to go outside and walk around. But before I tell you what you can look for outside, I need to remind you all to play responsibly. Try your best to stay aware of your surroundings, especially if you're near a road. And if you're a child, please do go with a friend, or even better, an adult. Now with the safety message out of the way, let's try and find our first wild Pokemon. One of the things you may notice as you're walking around are these green leaf particles that seem to spurt up on the map around you. These indicate points where Pokemon can commonly spawn. So if you see a particle effect like that nearby, go ahead and walk to it because you just might get lucky. Another way of finding Pokemon is to use the radar. If you click the button in the bottom right corner, you'll see a sheet full of Pokemon that are nearby, and they all have footstep indicators. Each footstep represents about 40 meters in distance, so the less footsteps you see under a Pokemon, the closer it is to you. If you want to track a specific Pokemon, then go ahead and click on it, and you will see its portrait as well as the footsteps indicator on the main map screen. When a Pokemon does appear around you, just do what we did before with the first Pokemon. Click on it, throw the ball, and hopefully you'll capture it. Pokemon! Now that you've caught a bunch of Pokemon, let's take a look at how to take care of them. First, I'll go over what all of the information you see here actually means. CP means combat power, which is basically another way of saying the level of the Pokemon. The higher the combat power is, the more powerful the Pokemon. So this is a number that you do want to try and raise if you want to be a gym leader. The semicircle which goes around the portrait of your Pokemon represents the current CP value compared to the max CP value which you're currently allowed to do. So you can see that this Ponyta is pretty close to being max level. However, the max level is based on your Pokemon trainer's level. So the higher level your Pokemon trainer is, 
the more combat power you can assign to one of your Pokemon. Underneath, we have the Pokemon's name, Ponita, which can be changed if you click on the pencil icon. And beneath that, we have the HP, which is health points, which shows how much damage this Ponita can take before fainting. Then under that, we have information such as the type of Pokemon. In this case, it's fire. And you want to pay attention to what kind of element your Pokemon is, because there are strengths and weaknesses. There's a lot of strengths and weaknesses in Pokemon though, so I won't go over all of those in this video. But as you can probably imagine, fire would be weak to water. Underneath that we have Stardust and our Pokemon Candy. Stardust and Candy can be earned by catching Pokemon and hatching eggs. The Stardust is a universal number that you use for all of your Pokemon and it's used to power them up. However, you also need a Pokemon specific candy. So in this instance, we also need to use a Ponita candy. Using the power button will increase your Pokemon's combat power at the cost of Stardust and Pokemon Candy. And if you have enough Pokemon Candy, you can even evolve your Pokemon to the next level. If you're a Pokemon fan, then you already know about Pokemon Evolution. However, if this concept is new to you, then basically the Pokemon will evolve into something new, something stronger. However, not all Pokemon evolve, and some have more evolutions than others. As you've been walking around, you may have noticed some weird markers on the map. These indicate Pokestops, which are an important part of your Pokemon Go adventure. Once you're close enough to the Pokestop, the icon will change from a square to a circle. This means you can click on it and gain some rewards. Once the information is loaded, give the circle a spin and you can be rewarded items such as potions, revive shards, pokeballs and other items once your Pokemon trainer level rises. Once used, a Pokestop icon turns from blue to purple, which means you have to wait a little while before you can use it again. But usually there are a couple of others nearby so you can walk around to each of them. If you're lucky, you might find a nearby Pokestop that has a confetti effect around it. This means that another Pokemon Go user has used an item called a Lure Module. The Lure Module greatly increases the encounter rate for random wild Pokemon and works for everybody that's near the Pokestop. Unlike the Incense, which only attracts Pokemon to your location and nobody else's. I highly recommend using your own Incense while at a Pokestop that does have a Lure Module active because you can catch an incredible amount of Pokemon. Another item you can get from Pokestops is a Pokemon Egg, which contains a random Pokemon from the game. To hatch an egg, you need to assign it to an incubator. Go ahead and touch one of the eggs and then touch an incubator to start the process. You'll see that there are distances next to each egg that can come in 2 kilometers, 5 kilometers, or 10 kilometers flavor. And as you might imagine, to hatch the egg you simply need to walk the distance shown. It should be noted though that you can't drive the distance because if you're going too fast the game will detect that you're not walking and it won't work. Also, you can't just use a treadmill as it doesn't work like a pedometer. You actually have to go out and walk the distance shown. Once you've reached the distance shown, the egg will show up on the main screen of the app. Simply touch it to start the hatching process. Then cross your fingers and hope that you're going to get something good. Hatching an egg also gives you a lot more candy for that Pokemon and Stardust than you would do by normally catching it. Which is really useful because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get enough candy to evolve it. And the final thing I want to teach you today is how to use a Pokemon Gym. These locations are visible from miles away and usually occupy large landmarks in your area. They act as stronghold locations for one of the three teams that you can join once you hit level 5. The three teams are Team Instinct, which is yellow, Team Mystic, which is blue, and Team Valor, which is red. The Pokemon Gym in front of us right now is red, which means it's held by Team Valor. If you are level 5 and click on a gym for the first time, you will be asked to join one of the teams. And it's up to you, it doesn't really matter which, but I would recommend trying to join a team that your friends are in, so you can work together. Let's take a look at some of the information presented when you click on a Pokemon gym. At the top of the screen, you'll see the name of the gym, which is usually based on the landmark where the gym is located, along with the gym level. The gym level refers to how many Pokemon can currently be assigned to defend it. This is a level 2 gym, which means there are two Pokemon here. Underneath the picture for the gym, we can see the prestige level, which is currently 2,373 out of 4,000. 
If the prestige hits the current limit of 4000, then the gym will level up to level 3, meaning that we can assign one more Pokemon to defend it. And if the prestige lowers to 0, then it will level down and the gym will be level 1, meaning only one Pokemon is defending it. The majority of this screen is taken up by the people who are currently defending the gym, so here we see the Pikachu. Now since I actually joined a Team Valor and this is a Team Valor gym, I can't take control of the gym, but by battling the Pokemon that currently exists there, if I win, then the prestige level for the gym goes up, which is a really good way to boost the level of a gym that your team currently owns. If, for example, I was actually part of Team Mystic, the blue team, and I fought the Pokemon here and won, then the level would go down and I could eventually take it over and place my own Pokemon in there. Let's take a look at how to actually fight in a Pokemon gym. At the top of the screen on the left hand side we see our Pokemon's information, such as the Pokemon's name, the health bar, its CP level, which is the combat power, its attack bar gauges, and the name of the Pokemon trainer. The same information can be seen for the opposing Pokemon, apart from the attack bar gauges. The controls are pretty simple. Swipe left or right to dodge the opponent's attacks, and when one of your attack bar gauges fills up on your Pokemon, simply touch and hold your Pokemon to unleash the deadly attack. So together we've learned how to acquire Pokemon and how to raise them to be as strong as they can be. We've taken a look at Pokestops as well as Pokemon Gyms. And believe me when I say we've only covered the basics, but this should be more than enough information you need to know to go out there and have your Pokemon adventure. If you're interested in knowing some more advanced details on how to get the most out of Pokemon Go, then let me know by leaving a comment down below and giving this video a thumbs up. And if someone you know is thinking about Pokemon Go but isn't quite sure yet, then go ahead and share this video and maybe it will convince them to get started. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, then please check out my other videos. And if you like what you see, then feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy hunting!